Newer, higher-end PCs have at least one USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 port. These ports support data transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, or really somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5 gigs per second in the real world. So in this video, I'll show you how to build your own DIY external USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 portable SSD. You can buy portable SSDs online from big names such as Samsung and Western Digital, but most of them use custom slower drives or USB connections. For example, this Western Digital only supports USB 3, has maximum read write of 400 megs or 10 gigabits per second for this one. This Samsung is only a 10 gigabit per second USB 3 2 Gen 2 and uses a custom drive. Store bought portable SSDs also tend to cost more, especially for USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 as in the case of this SanDisk, which is Thunderbolt 3 and 400 for the 4 terabyte. In our case, we'll be building a portable SSD using an NVMe enclosure and an off-the-shelf NVMe SSD. In my opinion, these DIY portable drives are better than regular USB SSDs because you can choose the quality and speed of the drive and swap the drive out without having to buy an entirely new proprietary drive. The first thing you will need is a USB 4 Thunderbolt NVMe enclosure. This is a device that can house an NVMe SSD inside and connect it to your PC with an included USB Type-C cable. It will act like any other USB storage device in Windows without any additional software. But there is one little step you may want to consider doing on Windows to get the full speed of the enclosure. More on that later on. I use this Ugreen 4 gigabits per second enclosure that supports various different M2 NVMEs as well as backwards compatibility with Thunderbolt 3 and USB 3.2 down. I also recommend this one by Acasis, which is another popular one. You'll notice these USB 4 Thunderbolt enclosures have little fans on them or in them. And that's because the enclosures uses a little bit more power to spin those fans and keep the NVMe cool because NVMe's can get really hot inside these little enclosures and too much heat can throttle the speeds and degrade the drive. The Ugreen enclosure comes with two short USB cables, one that's USB-C to USB-A, which is really a USB 3.2 Gen 2 cable with a max transfer speed of up to 20 gigabits per second and a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which is in fact a legit certified USB 4 cable with a max transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. Along with the enclosure itself, a screw for the NVMe drive, screwdriver, some NVMe gum to put on top of the NVMe to keep it cool. And the reason I like this enclosure the best is because it has this little bumper, which makes the whole thing feel really nice and solid. Nice build quality on this one. Next up, you'll need an off-the-shelf NVMe SSD. I recommend Samsung because they are high performance and crucial, specifically the Crucial P and T series. Now, because USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 max transfer speeds cap out at 4 gigabits per second, don't worry about getting the fastest NVMe unless you plan to use it inside your PC or in some other device. For example, the Samsung drive can read and write up to 7,000 megabytes per second. You're not going to get that out of a USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. Do make sure your NVMe drive is at least Gen 4 PCIe. So if it says Gen 4, as in the case of this drive, Gen 5, which is even faster at 12,000 megabytes per second. Again, don't bother as you're not going to get those speeds inside this enclosure. Just make sure the drive is at least 4,000 megabytes per second to get the maximum speed out of the enclosure. As I said, the cables that come with this Ugreen enclosure are pretty short. If you want something a little longer, you want to make sure you get the right cable. Any USB type C cable will do. But for the max transfer speeds, you want to make sure to get a certified USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 cable like this Anchor 515, which is 3.3 feet, supports 40 gigabit transfer speeds along with all the other things USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 supports. Do not go looking for super long USB 4 Thunderbolt cables as longer cables will have reduced speeds and performance. They're also going to be pretty cheap build wise. Now that we've got our enclosure and NVMe, let's go ahead and build ourselves a portable USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 SSD.
Once you've installed the NVMe, go ahead and connect the enclosure to a USB-C port on your computer. In my case, I'll be connecting to a USB 4 port. Usually the drives will just show up as local disk under this PC. If not, you may need to create the partition and format the drive. To do this, open up computer management and go to disk management. Locate the disk. If you see this little red arrow and the disk says offline, right click and put online. Then if you see this unallocated space, right click and create new simple volume. Hit next. Assign it a letter drive or mount folder. And I'd suggest keeping the file system at NTFS is more reliable than XFAT. And give it a name. Hit next. Finished. Once complete, you should see your drive in this PC. Transferring data over USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 is incredibly fast and great for moving huge video files and other large amounts of data. To demonstrate, I have this folder with two very large virtual machines, a Linux Mint one and a Windows 11 one. It's got a size of 133 gigs. So let's go ahead and move this folder and see how fast it transfers. We can see we're getting about two point something gigs. And complete. Now for some reason when I first got this enclosure, transferring this amount of data was incredibly slow. I was seeing speeds of 200 and 400 megs per second instead of 1.5 or 2 gigs. If that's the case for you, here's what you need to do. Open up device manager under disk drives and you should see something like ASMT SCSI disk or whatever it says. Right click that, go to properties. And under policies, where it says quick remove, change this to better performance, enable write caching on the device. This will unlock the full speed of the enclosure. However, it will require you to use the safe remove feature. Otherwise, you risk losing data if you just eject the disk. And you will need to restart your PC for the changes to take effect. Let's go ahead and run Crystal Disk Mark to see how fast our drive is. I'll select the disk, go on ahead and delete it that folder and we'll go ahead and run all tests. And this will show us our maximum read and write speeds on the device. We're getting reads of 38 megabytes per second, random read at 200 megabytes per second. This is reading data randomly on the disk. We're getting write speeds of about 37 megs per second. Now these numbers will vary each time you do the test. It's never really consistent, but it is close to the 40 gigabits per second that I see advertised on the device. Here are the results. And these are the numbers you should expect to see when you connect the enclosure to a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 port. I now have the drive connected to a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. We'll see how fast that is. Test is complete and my USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports have a max speed of 10 gigabits per second. And that's about what I'm seeing for the read and writes. And the random is 300 megs. Some USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports can go up to 20 gigabits per second, I believe. And you should see something like 19 or 1800 megs per second. Now I'll test the NVMe inside my PC. All right, test is complete. And you can see the reads is much faster on the internal NVMe. The writes are not as fast. My internal NVMe is a crucial P3 drive, I believe. So they're not gonna be the best performing. If this was a Samsung NVMe, you would see these numbers really high. 
So it's interesting to see that the USB Thunderbolt drive can actually write faster than my internal drive. Before ending this video, I thought I'd mention some caveats with using an enclosure such as this. First off, again, max speeds will cap at 40 gigabits per second or 4,000 megabytes read and write speeds. Also, enclosures such as this Ugreen require more power to run those little fans. And because of that, they won't be compatible with Android on the go. So you can't just plug this into an Android phone and browse the files on it. At least, I don't think, for most phones. And lastly, because they do require more power, I don't think this Ugreen enclosure or any of these USB 4 Thunderbolt enclosures will work on USB 2 ports. So be aware of all of that. At the time I'm recording this video, Intel is already in the lab working on Thunderbolt 5 and USB 4 Gen 2. Both will have double the speed of USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4. So when those enclosures come out, I'll be back with another DIY video. If you like my content, consider becoming a YouTube member, get early access to new content, or consider becoming a Patreon member and get access to exclusive content too hot for YouTube.